है बाद मस्त बादा आशा में अहमदेयत चलता है दौर में okay um over the past few weeks um especially with jalsa that just happened um you know it was very very historic jalsa alhamdulillah and we're going to get into that a little bit later um but we were waiting for kasim because kasim usually starts off with the news khudam news um he's just a bit delayed with some i think every week he has some technical technical difficulty um so we're just waiting for him we big 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 character destroyed marshal <laughs> marshal harun sab is on today marshal assalamualaikum rabbi sab wa alaikum salam marshal marshal how are you doing man alhamdulillah how are yourself today is truly a truly a just a miracle <laughs> there's lots of miracles to talk about Is that your kids are at home as well or are you not at home? <laughs> uh well the school holidays everyone's all over the place. Okay. That's good that's good. No it's because we have we have Ibrahim on as well he's he's uh, managed to get rid of his kids. <laughs> it's good to have some parents <laughs> on as well. <laughs> I was going to think before to at least clarify to everyone else before we have too many regional I'm not so this isn't a meeting you haven't gone joined the wrong thing. Yeah. Yeah, we're going to see the real side of Ibrahim today. <laughs> not, the, <laughs> not the general side. <laughs> Mashallah. Uh yeah, Harry, we we're just talking about um just how we're catching up after Jalsa. Uh and uh, we're just going to train to to the discussion about Jalsa. Um I'll start off with you Harun because I know uh, you've had a few, you have a few stories to tell that maybe didn't get heard. Um so Harry, just tell us a little bit about uh, usually what you do in Jalsa. and how was it different this year and some incidents that you probably experienced that people didn't hear oh, about oh mrabi sab on the spot a bit there um <laughs> i mean um assalamu alaikum to everyone uh, yes. first and foremost um yeah i mean the weather really mrabi sab uh, really made this year's jalsa different if it wasn't going to be different already with the uh, covid-19 situation and all of the extra checks and everything that came with that but um if if I'm honest you from a personal perspective Rabi Saab and uh, and all of the brothers I didn't think that Jalsa was going to be on this year I thought you know you know that there's the um everybody knows this or should know this but apparently Hazur asks everybody in Rabwa to prepare for uh, Jalsa every year even though they know it's not going to happen and i thought that this was going to be one of those situations where we were going to be basically put to a test really because of the covid situation and very very last minute we were going to be asked to basically tools down tools uh but i think up and up until our final meeting in preparation for jalsa i just had the realization that this this is on really so that's the first thing from a personal perspective that i thought wow actually with the covid situation this is a massive massive attempt on a health and safety point of view that we're going to do this inshallah and obviously with the the blessings of the khalifa um that alhamdulillah it was just one of those miraculous jalsas really that you know with the situations that we were faced with the weather that alhamdulillah we we got through it and and it's again it's that old tale uh, you know where you know regardless of whatever is put up against us and whatever challenges we face no matter how big allah always finds a way and that was ever more evident with this jalsa i mean can you imagine you know at one point we had over 1500 cars that literally literally every single one of those cars needed pushing out it doesn't matter 
you see, I've I've recently bought a four by four car. It was absolutely nothing to do with John. So I didn't know that the uh, that the, 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 the weather was going to be like that and the terrain would be difficult. It's just Allah's, Allah's plans, really, if you want to call it that. And I came onto the site a little bit arrogant. We could say my car will be all right with this, right? Four by four, Jeep car, off-road mode, no problem. But as the brothers on the call will tell you, Rabbi Saab, it don't matter what car you were driving on, on, on that with the hills and the terrain and the way that the rain had affected the grass um oh you want me to start the video one second one second i've just seen that i thought my video was on sorry um no, sorry. yeah so whatever whatever car doesn't matter whether it was a range rover the 100 grand range rover top of the range whatever cars were there they were struggling and and the brothers who were there will tell you some really good stories. I mean, I I I drove onto the site and I thought, you know what, drop drop your. Uh, it don't matter whether you're driving a Mercedes or whatever. You need to just park up and leave it there and don't mess around for the rest of the day because you're going to be embarrassed if you're arrogant. And uh, the brothers will tell you who were there. There were some really 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 funny stories of heroes we call them, right? Who just. We're just looking at them, just drive through the car park, and we're thinking, what are you guys playing at? You know, uh, and and they were even telling us some people were, don't don't come us and push us. We have got four by four cars. Don't come near us. We're 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 good. Yeah. We're good. And we just you know where the blessed tree is, Murabi Saab, at the top of the hill. Yeah. You you can yeah. see all of the car park on that side. You know, car park one and two, the disability one, and. Um, we were just standing there laughing half the time at just these guys just and and Bajare, you know some of them were in salwar kameez as well right <laughs> and so it's like what are you doing a driving through the car park and b not preparing your dress accordingly you know um so you know uh, the brothers on the call will remember the 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 jut the jut number plate car the BMW X5 who who drove all the and they were just driving around the car park like it's summer you know, and um, anyway, so that was one particular story. We ended up pushing him in the end. You know, he ended up calling for our help. And, you know, Nazim Saab, was there, Nazim Saab was there going, you know what? We won't go yet. Let's let him, let's let him suffer a little bit, the understanding of what he shouldn't have done really, yeah? And so in the end, we were always going to go. And so we ended up pushing him out. Um, so there was lots of stories like that, you know, people who just saw the terrain and thought, yeah, you know what, I've got four by four. I was very, very early doors. I thought, you know what, I'm going to just park and going to leave my car there because I don't want to be embarrassed, you know. Um, the one story that I want to just relate, because I don't want to take up too much of the, the time, but the one one was, I've actually given an interview on um, Jalsa Connect for this particular story. So if anybody's seen that, then um, I'll just go over it again for anyone who does. There was one really heavy uh, Mercedes E-Class. It was one of the old school classics, rear wheel drive, uh, really, really low. The, the, the person who owned it had lowered it down. And that makes things more difficult because of the center of gravity. The closer you are to the ground, the more difficult it is to push a car out of a ditch that it's made. And this particular brother was driving out um, and he had, I can't remember the Marabi's name, but uh, you will definitely know him, Rabbi Saab. He's, um, he had to go to Germany and um, they need to take him to the airport. But yeah. he was in such a deep ditch. It's yeah. like we would, we would give up after, like there were 15 of us, easily there were 15 of us, right? Anyway, Nazim Saab came and he says, guys, we don't give up. There is no way that we are going to give up. And, and you know, this Murabi as well, I mean, I don't think he was late, but it was kind of pushing it where if we didn't get this car out, he would have needed to look for alternative methods to get him to the airport. Yeah. So Nazim Saab came and said, listen, guys, let's, let's all read Dua Dru Chipat there. Inshallah, this car is coming out, right? Even the driver, I mean, the driver was a, he was a hefty car at one stage. We were saying, actually, you're the fault, really, why this car is not coming out of the ditch because of <laughs> him being quite a, uh, but he was, you know, Alhamdulillah, you know, I have to say as well, just on a side note, that all of the attitude of all of the guests 
were, mashallah, this year, spot on. Mm. Lots and lots of dua, lots and lots of kindness and understanding, you know, with the job that we had to do. Um, mm. But yeah, this particular driver, he was a Torah Mazaki Ta. He was a funny kind of guy. He was, um, he, he, I think he was from, um, I don't know if one of any of the brothers on the call, but he's one of the regions that are doing... Um, Berun, you see the, the outside bit of the yeah, yeah. Berun side. So he he was a duty guy as well. But he said, "Look, guys, I don't think this is happening." So Nazim Saab came and said, "Listen, guys, druji parte, sare dua parte, and another four or five guys just come because that's how it would work. Yeah. Is that there were the groups of ten, fifteen of us in dotted around the car park, right? Just going to the car. These guys had just pushed out another car, so we had another five cars, but." You know, alhamdulillah, the Duru chief, the dua that we, we read all together, this car just miraculously just rocked itself, obviously with the pushing uh, out of a ditch. And, and by the end of Jalsa, you could say now the car park team are complete experts on how to get any car out of a massive ditch because of the learning that we did uh, across Jalsa. But lots and lots of stories, lots and lots of mud on our faces, lots and lots of... Um, Funny times as well, you know, the difficult times, but funny times. It reminds me, Rabbi Saab, of the hardest duty that I've personally done is I've done hygiene, right, from back in the day. The duty that I used to do before, um, before um, uh, sort of uh, car park juice hygiene. But the good thing about hygiene was is, is that we were all together cleaning toilets together, and that made it a good laugh, a good sort of camaraderie. And it's exactly the same um on on the car park issue we, it was hard work we were pushing literally nearly every car out there some some evenings until midnight you know but alhamdulillah allah was with us the camaraderie was there we had good leadership we were all in it together some of the young lads are an inspiration really you know for some senior kudam like myself looking at some of the young lads there by the grace of allah you know we we, we got through it but Sab and uh you know, um, a big, big up to all of the, the brothers who, who were there with us uh, and enjoyed it, you know. But I'll tell you something, my, I've got football tonight and my back is still killing from Jalsa. I don't know how I'm going to last tonight, to be honest with you. <laughs> it took a yeah, I'm, I'm sure Hamza will have something to say about that later on. But um, brilliant, Harun. Um, what you're saying is, is actually spot on, you know, just about, um, you know, the reason why Khudam come and give uh, time for Jalsa and the reason why we all come together is firstly to sacrifice our time but also you know to get into the nitty-gritty of things and you know get our hands dirty and we say that you know people have become soft they don't want to do these things anymore but I think this was such a beautiful um, description of especially us guys in the West Midlands you know coming down every single year and doing the car park duty but I think the the, the rain was a blessing uh, like you said the attitude of all the guests was everyone was humble Everyone wanted to come to Jalsa and, and enjoy it. Um, and you guys being there in the car park and, you know, pushing everyone out of the, out of the mud was um, a completely amazing experience. And I think we can say that now more than any other time, because as Hazur himself said in the Friday sermon today, you know, he highlighted as one of the first things after thanking all those people who are on duty, you know, the very first people that he, he mentioned were those people in the car park. Yeah, and yeah. That, their work didn't go unnoticed so no one who was on duty uh, in the car park duty should ever feel like Allah didn't see their work or people didn't see their work and obviously we didn't shouldn't do it to please people but it's just an added bonus that uh, Huzuru said that even MTA were there and they managed to capture uh, not just you guys but even you know Sadr Saab Khudam Namadiyah who also came and who made, also made the pictures um, who was you know, it's a great great part of him, himself but you guys were all there, you know, right from the three, four days um, pushing the cars. It was just uh, amazing. Murabi Saba, sorry to interrupt. I'm just going to go on mute and turn my camera off. I've got to pick up my missus from the train station. So, no, but right. I, am listening. I am listening, all right? So, um... no, just don't get stuck in the mud. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I, I am listening, though. I'm on the call. Yeah, brilliant. Zakla for you. Um, so, just I'm going to play a video in, in a short while, but. Um, uh, Hamza, I know you just jumped off the camera. It's fun if you're able to just um, come on for a second. But I'm looking fresh, nice haircut. Oi, 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 Dari and that. Yeah, the last time we saw you, a bit, a bit may mayhem. Oh, no. Well, it was before Eid, wasn't it? It was before Eid, it was a while ago, about a month ago, I think. I think just like about a good time then, yeah. Oi, 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 oi. 
But Jamza, we saw some amazing pictures of yourself as well. Uh, probably against your will, I'm guessing. <laughs> but... Listen, I don't even know who was taking those pictures, but they weren't they weren't taken with consent. I'll tell you now. There was no <laughs> consent find... taken for those pictures. <laughs> I think I know who it was as well. Uh, it was it one of the Murabian in it. I don't know. I thought it was Salisab. Uh, I thought it was Salisab, but he took some other ones without consent as well. I need to get them all back and delete them all. Get them all off social media. <laughs> oh, We're talking about consent. Like, I ended up in the Real Religions video. I only did like five minutes work. Mm. Uh, <laughs> I was in the car park because my car was stuck, right? So I thought, well, never like find the guests are going to need priority. Like, want my car stuck? I'll just leave it where it is. Leave it. Bitch. And I think I probably pushed two cars. The rest of the time, I was just managing traffic like, oh away from all these other legends. Um, too, much, too much humbleness. <laughs> I was watching. I end up, end up pushing I was stuff. watching. I was watching that interview when uh, when they were pushing out the media van of the Re 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 religions. When Osama started talking and his mask was on, I'm like, I swear, no, he's. Uh, I yeah. swear, I swear, I've heard his voice before. Okay. And like, but you, you couldn't, you, you couldn't obviously. Um, like, like whether or not he's, he's, wearing, he's wearing his mask or not like you yeah. can still recognize him yeah. this is the beautiful thing this is what the quran says that allah chooses who he gives respect <clears throat> and honor to in this world and it's completely allah's choice you know we can do like you said five minute work and mt just happened to be there and make it look like you were the guy in the face of all the, all of the work um but this is just you know you should just say alhamdulillah and thank allah for for giving you that respect um, but also obviously pray for everyone else who who you know that we're doing all the hard work in the, in the background uh, but yeah Hamza that picture was beautiful man the, all the mud on you all over your body and everything um, well how many cars did you have to push for that to happen leading up to that but I think you're on mute sorry 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 can you hear me now can you hear me now yeah. I think for those ones it's just uh, being unlucky if it's a rear wheel drive car and then <laughs> if they're putting a lot of gas on, the rear wheel just spins and all the mud goes everywhere. So I think I was just in the wrong position to get all that mud on me rather than doing that much work. <laughs> just in the position. You were just rolling around in the mud, mate. <laughs> Literally like in the back corner on a rear wheel drive car and they just goes everywhere. Yeah. That's, that's, that was just unlucky more than anything else. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, I had the same thing. Yeah, I don't think it, uh, even the front wheel, sometimes the mud will just splatter all the way towards the back as well. Yeah, I think if you're on the window, on yeah. the window with the front wheel drive, then yeah, you're then you, yeah, if you're just, the, yeah. yeah, if you're in the corner of a, the corner of the back tire on a rear wheel drive, then you finished as well. <laughs> if they put you, I'm the side, you muted. Yeah, I'm muted again. My bad. Yeah, I was saying basically what Carson by said. If you're on the window, on the front window, on a front, a, a, right. a front wheel drive, then you finished. Yeah. Same on the back for a real wheel drive car in the corner. Where's the best place to start next time? We should know right where. in the middle, man. Right in the middle. Right in the middle. The right in the middle. The You're safe there. You're safe there. <laughs> Inside the car, I guess. Uh, you guys weren't just pushing. You weren't just pushing forward. You're pushing backwards as well, even to the side. Yeah, we, yeah, uh, we have to do a rock motion to get it out. Yeah. Or just whatever, whatever the expert driver said. Like uh, I think Daha's on the car as well. Whatever they guided, we just did what we were told in it. Yeah, <laughs> thing these guys they, were, they almost had it down to like knowing you see the, the, the make of the car and then they already knew where they needed to be. And if it's an S class, just give them five minutes, let them <laughs> understand what the mess they've got themselves into, and then wait for another 20 for them. And if you've yeah. got 20, you'd have a chance. <laughs> yeah. I was a bit in the Harun situation where I, I left the car park and I thought I'll be fine, you know, I can yeah. see the. <laughs> the, the pavement, the, the pathway is a bit is flat and everything. Literally, I just left the car. I just, you know, pressed the accelerator and I was stuck straight away. And I got told before, if you get stuck, don't press the accelerator more because then you just, you just dig yourself a hole. And unfortunately, I did. I started doing. It, I thought I could turn to the side a bit. <laughs> <laughs> I was, that was good. But it was beautiful. What Hazur said. But it'd be some had. Uh... Yeah, he had big Walid like... pushing. Yeah, we had Walid at the back yeah. <laughs> pushing everyone when he was there for that day. Yeah. There's also something really beautiful today when talking about the car park duty says, you know, when uh, it's like we're all one body and if one one thing wrong happens then you know, the rest of the body comes and tries to assist it. And that's what I felt you know, when I was stuck. I could just feel like, you know, blood cells, they rushed to, to, yeah, to yeah. fix a wound. <laughs> I felt like that, like that, 
like five, six people just came out of nowhere. And they just started <laughs> pushing. I was like, wow, this is amazing. Oh, you got adrenaline. Yeah, it was unbelievable. It was really good to see. But it's good to see, you know, from your side. Hamza, is there anything that, you know, any inspirational thing that you saw? Um, um, what about due to this year? I think just quite a few of the cars were quite tricky to push. We pushed a Range Rover um, right in the corner of one of the car parks one of the days. Um, and we didn't think we were able to get that one out. But um, it was also to the driver's fault because he had it in neutral, I think. <laughs> he had it in neutral. We it. <laughs> so we put it into drive and we got that one out. Um, I think seeing quite the four by fours. Um, then my, my dad got his car out by himself, actually. He just, do, he just went forward. He's got a big four by four as well. Yeah, and um, my dad, he's like, he doesn't like, help, like get taking help. Sometimes I do it himself, so he just managed to get out by himself. And we didn't expect that to happen, but he's got the experience with the driving to get out by himself somehow. Yeah, that's amazing. So yeah, stuff like that was pretty amazing to see. Yeah. You feel like a, you feel like a proper king when you get out yourself, don't you? Yeah, he, I think he's the only one who sort of did it. He made he went he made like a ramp himself, going oh. forwards and backwards. So he got some momentum going backwards, and then he managed to find another route out. So he just likes to, he likes to do it himself, basically. <laughs> yeah, it got to the point where even the tractors were stuck. Especially yeah. the tractor, it was just parked there, and it was like four or five inches deep. deep. Mm. Mashallah. Kasim, as, you, as you're on the call, um, how was your experience this year in Jelsa? How was like... Uh, yeah, I mean, it was my first time doing parking duty. So, yeah, it was really tough, but uh, it was really uh, rewarding as well. I mean, uh, on very some incidents. I mean, on Saturday, especially the uh, National Southern Saab uh, sent the whole team in the Jalsaga parking lot some donuts. So we had fun just eating donuts for like a while. And there was a brilliant story behind them. So the Nazim was kind of uh, they were giving reports, and National Southern Saab asked that, uh, "Is there anything that you need uh, from us?" And so Nazim Southern Saab said that he needs uh, support. So National Southern Saab kind of turns around towards his back and say, uh, in, in ke liye thada and then and then and, and Nazim said, no, 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 I meant we need people support. But anyways, <laughs> they got the donors as well. So the, the, that was in, people enjoyed that as well. Blessing in disguise. <laughs> yeah, blessing in disguise. <laughs> also accidental blessing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, so there was one story with uh, with Harry. You know he's got his quad bike all the time. Yeah. Um, driving around this time, he he had to buy another one this time actually because his first one, he left it. Um, he left it, you know, in the barn by the uh, by the gate on the other side. He left it there, and yeah. Jello, we don't know exactly what happened, but he couldn't find it again. So he got <laughs> a new quad, and then um, I think on the Sunday he let a few people ride it. But anyway, um, stops working, so he gets he uh, you know, Nadi. He says he got stolen. Chalo, he got stolen. Yeah. <laughs> he got stolen. <laughs> Chalo. Uh, yeah. Um, so then, um, with that one, first he got Barzik to have a look because Barzik's doing some uh, studying in mechanics. He's doing an apprenticeship. Um, they tried a few little different things, but they couldn't get it to work. Then, uh, then Nadim, by you know Birmingham West, he's also a mechanic, like a lot more experienced. Mm -hmm. Then he came over. He found out what the problem was. Um, Someone with a carburetor, which is getting sorted now. But at the time. Um, the quad was very dirty, very gunda. And uh, Nadim Bai basically said, whack it in the car and take it back to Birmingham. I'll sort it then. Really yeah. dirty. Yeah. Um, and it would have it would ruin would have ruined Harry's car if we put it in as it was. All the tires, everything proper gunda. So then we basically it's very light though. So we just rolled it down to the barn side. And there there's a Nazim there, just the jet washing. And um, this Nazim, lovely guy. He um, every year he gets loads of people coming to him saying, Can you jet wash my car? Can you jet wash my bike? Okay. This and that. Um, he always says no because obviously it's a strict, it's strict criteria. It's for the deck, just for the food stuff, isn't it? And then for the first time, Harry went up to him very nicely. He was like, "Look, this is a situation. Car parks are yeah." And he knows how much work we've been doing, how much we've been grafting in that. And I think this is the first he's been doing it. I don't know years, five, ten, maybe even more years than that. And he was like, "Look, I've been doing this for a long time, but for you guys, I'll um, I'll sort it out for you." So he let us go into the jet wash area. The deck chair in one corner, seven all the years. stuff in one. Okay, seven, seven years. Seven, seven years, years seven years. Seven years he's been doing this, yeah. And that's the seven first years. request from his staff that he's granted outside of a, a day wow. in terms of uh, what they mean. Yeah, yeah, it was really, really, it felt like, you know, that was God's intervention as well, really, because yeah, yeah. 
he, yeah. he, he was in an impossible situation. If you'd have had to try and even wash that down with a hose pipe, Rabbi Saab, he would be there for hours. But the days, man, I days. Think, <laughs> so, uh, video in the in the football in the football group, I think, if you saw Rabbi Saab, uh, that that video of where they jet washed it. Um, yeah. Alhamdulillah, mashallah, within minutes and. You know, that Nazim, he just felt like he was an angel from God at that time, you know. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Very nice guy. Very nice guy. And He's then, yeah. He's probably the guy that took your quarterback the first. <laughs> 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 he washed it down. Made it look spotless. Not a spot on yeah. it then. You owe him, you owe him, him a car. Yeah, got it in Harry's car after. Oh, you, owe him a, you owe him a ride next year, definitely. <laughs> I think you took his number. He'll do something nice for him, I reckon. I think you gave him a thank oh, for the thanks or something. <laughs> No, <laughs> if I could share one thing, there's one thing that stuck out for me from uh, my time when I ended up in, in that car park um, was um, just something which you know you see there's you know, there's no kind of um, what's, what's the word where you know the, the people that are, are in charge they're not you know they're not being patronising or, or in any way there's no everyone's brothers right there's there's only all they all to just work at work at a level so. I mean, I, I happened to be there just because my car was stuck. But you know, after after a couple of hours, we eventually had like you know, three nine refs around that were there. So the majlis obviously was was there. Um, you had people being pulled out of the offices and, and stuff, and saying just to saying, look, right right now, the most important thing for because I'm on site to be doing is getting all these cars out. Um, and yeah, it didn't, it didn't matter what an Islamic it was. Yeah, you know, people were turning up and you know, just they chucked on a poncho that hadn't done any duty like all, all just. <laughs> But for those, those that, you know, for that hour, for those few hours that they were there, <laughs> it, it was all it was all about the guests, right? And, and and everyone was just like, look, whatever just needs to be done, uh, let's just get it done. I mean, Shajil Saab from uh, Nottingham, he at one point was covered like head to toe, literally head to toe in mud, like you could not see a clean spot on him. Um, he just turned around to me and like my G2 was in walkie-talkie. He turned around to me, he showed me walkie-talkie, just as if someone just dropped it in a puddle of mud. And he's like, yeah, if I'm, I'm probably going to need a new walkie talkie. <laughs> is this, you know, but at the same time, he just kind of, you know, got the mud out of his mouth and carried on, went to the next car. And then just to, uh, to see that the attitude from everyone was, you know, was, if that isn't inspiring, then it's at least, you know, it's, it's, you, you can understand that, you know, it's, there comes a time when, okay, well, you know, all these regions and what have you will come together. Um, and then to see everyone being able to like leave all ego aside, to leave whatever else to, to one side and group together and, and get and get the job done. That was that was really amazing. That was I was going to ask you, Ibrahim Saab, as well, because we haven't really seen each other for so long now. You know, it's over, over almost two years. How was that feeling of you know suddenly on the most extreme level of having all the brothers together and you know working together? How was how was that feeling and seeing everyone working together as well, and just observing from your point of view? Well. The honest answer is to start with, I was public enemy number one because I hadn't I hadn't given everyone the batteries that I needed to that morning. So <laughs> I then turned up and I was like being a bit sheepish, but man, alhamdulillah, it almost just like clicked straight into gear straight away. Like uh, having like been in Midlands and then not being part of the Midlands team necessarily like the last couple of years at, at Jelso is, is always it's been a bit weird anyway. But at least I was able to feel that okay, I was at least able to contribute something to. To the regional GT and you know getting getting stuck in there, um, but at the same time it just you know, it clicks straight into gear as well. It's almost like you know once you get that team of people together, we, you know we know that there's you just go into into that Khadam Bukharian all type mentality of like let's just let's just do it. Yeah. I mean these guys must have been sick of each other, right? If they were like <laughs> staying in the thing for part day after day, yeah. I was able to at least yeah do do my bit. Mashallah. What what I saw is um, when I, when I was there, it was it was chucking it down like crazy, and you know it wasn't even normal rain. It was like heavy heavy showers, and it would last for like five ten minutes, and then it would stop, and then it would start again. But just seeing everyone just standing on their posts, and you know, still having that motivation and energy just to come together and you know carry on pushing was something I've never ever seen in my life before. Um, yeah, I, mean, I was I was doing a battery round on during one of those kind of downpours, um, and with the you know reduced budget, reduced manpower, I was was out on foot with the, another one of my team. Um, probably not the best time to be carrying like thirty electrical batteries, um, <laughs> but it was like that rain was something else. It was almost like you know that 
it just literally was absolutely tipping it down. And then when it decided to stop, the people around us were like, oh, it's it's like Aladella just turned the taps off and <laughs> that, that turret <laughs> stopped in a second. <laughs> Never seen anything like it. Yeah, well, <laughs> mashallah, brilliant. That's uh, actually not that uh, not a bad way to describe rain in UK. <laughs> mm. yeah, tab, just a working tab. <laughs> yeah, it definitely did feel like someone was turning the hose on. Um, <laughs> at least when I was there. Anyway. Uh, I just want to get the the view of someone who was experiencing just uh, um, from home. Um, I know mostly, mostly. I know because you're underage. How was the feeling for you? Um, and how was just this year for you? Uh, Asalamu alaikum. Oh, it was like, I listened to the speeches a lot better than I would have when I'm actually at Jalasa. Yeah. Because like I was sitting down and then also on MTA they show you like everything that's going on um, properly, which you like don't get to see when you're actually there. Yeah. And then, yeah, I just missed being with everyone as well because normally you're just with everyone in it. And yeah. then couldn't do it this year. And what was your what was your feelings when you were seeing these pictures of our boys, you know, pushing the cars in the car park and getting so much... Uh, media attention i wanted to be in it <laughs> <laughs> yeah but did it like did you feel like it was a it was a feeling of sacrifice for you that yeah you know, obeying like, what Zura said and you would love to be there but through obedience you can't yeah yeah that's brilliant um mashallah jazakallah uh, i think you you weren't even allowed to come to the mosque were you uh, no i wasn't oh it is yeah remind everyone how old you are 17 17 yeah one year one year off inshallah next year you'll get the chance to Isha. go inshallah. um Zishan as well Zishan I think you're there for a few days yeah if Zishan if you're able to unmute yourself uh, so, um, yes I was there for uh, from Thursday yes from Thursday sure and you probably experienced pretty much the same thing uh, yeah, so my duty was actually inside and in the command oh, okay. centre, but I did spend most of the time in the car park as well, trying to push the cars. Isn't it, isn't it strange one of the pictures was your car being stuck, wasn't it? Oh uh, yeah, and this guy stopped driving my car and I didn't even know it was stuck. <laughs> and I saw <laughs> the picture, I was like, that was my car. <laughs> Another example of, you know, five minute of glory of not even <laughs> being in the duty, but, you know, catching what up, Issa? Yes. I just want to say, you know, what was also quite special about um, this year's Jalsa is we probably take it for granted. This is the first event that we've actually come together as a group of people to do any Jamaat work in, what, 18 months, maybe? Yeah. You know, I, I, I don't know how, exactly how long. But that was, again, another special moment because I haven't seen these people outside of virtual, on the phone, on the camera, in person in that time so again it was just that extra added special and actually for me personally i've really missed it i mean you know what if god sub called me tomorrow and said <coughs> there's some bakari i'm going up the mosque like yeah i've got a good taste for this now because you know this is a special thing that we outside of the jamaat we don't have this you know you have your work situation your colleagues and meals out and all this and that but this is how special this was was just a really really unique feeling that we've missed for the last 18 months yard yeah this is this is what i was saying this was asking ibrahim sub <clears throat> about <clears throat> that feeling because we're going from like one extreme to the other extreme of just being thrown into the deep end and everyone just suddenly uh remembering how to do and you know what we need to do but um i think it was nice to see that everyone you know, still has that passion and motivation to when we're called upon uh, we're always there to help um, and you know you boys in the Midlands um, you know we don't need to don't need to ask you how how much service you already do but alhamdulillah it was really nice to see that and for all of you guys to have that honor of you know being mentioned by Hazur indirectly um, for doing that duty so you know credit goes to you guys mashallah it just shows that you know when you when you're low to the Khilafat and when you're low to your badge and duty um, Allah will always reward it in, in some way. So long may it continue, inshallah. Um, Jazakallah. I just want to go, if Sabur, if Sabur, I don't know if Sabur is on, uh, usually doesn't <laughs> unmute himself, but if you can, um, if you can unmute yourself while we're talking, that'll be brilliant. Um, and anyone else, if anyone else has any experiences that they probably want to share, 
um, I don't know who I can go to. If not, then um, uh, we'll go to the next segment, which is the news, because a lot has been happening in the news as well. Tiga, I think we'll go straight into the news because Qasim has prepared a few few segments and items that he wants to share. Um, so yeah, Qasim, over to you for now. Jazakallah. Uh, okay, yeah. Assalamu alaikum rahmatullah. Uh, welcome to K News. Uh, sorry, I'm a, I was a bit late. Uh, funny story, I'm actually stuck in my room and I can't get out. <laughs> the door handle broke, so for the foreseeable future, I'm actually stuck in my room. <laughs> All right. Anyways, yeah. Uh, welcome to K News. Uh, this one would have been a bonus K News. I was going to try something new, but the guy ditched at the last minute, so now I can't do it. <laughs> so we're, we're going to have normal news. Uh, first, UK, as obviously, uh, uh, still rather slow. 47 million people have had first dose. Now, uh, for the second dose, 40 million people now have reached uh, second dose. So as of now, 40 million have second dose as well. So they're fully vaccinated. Uh, 200,000 people have had confirmed positive tests from the last week, which adds the total to it. And then 5,000 patients are in hospital with COVID. Uh, in Afghanistan, uh, UK troops are being sent there to get Britain out as the Taliban have uh, uh, conquered and lay siege to a, a lot of major, uh, uh, major uh, some uh, towns and major points, important points. And around 600 UK troops are to be sent to Afghanistan to uh, assist the British nationals to leave. Uh, half a million uh, European citizens await decisions to... Uh, over rights to stay in UK. So as due to Brexit, uh, half a million U European citizens, which means people in Europe and they were EU citizen are waiting a decision over UK. And there are about 569,000 cases that are still pending in July, since July. Uh, informative news, how can we all get more sleep, more high quality sleep? So obviously with this COVID, uh, it's, uh, one of the major things that has caused is insomnia and if it has like a uh, university of Wolverhampton did a research study and they found that from uh the people who have experienced so insomnia have rise from one over six people to one over four so which is a big change so uh, some tips that can be uh, that have been given are obviously first of all have a, a consistent uh, timetable for sleep so rather than sleeping at random points, uh, have like a consistent timetable, like 10 to 8. And uh, also uh, try to, if you're, if you're going to sleep, try to uh, remove all sorts of electronics, work, or just distance yourself away from them. And that will help you sleep better. Uh, entertainment news. Uh, electric cars do prime minister, uh, do ministers put their motor where their mouth, uh, mouth is. Unfortunately, Boris Johnson does, has not yet purchased a hybrid electric car. He still drives his diesel cars, which is yeah, it's kind of a, a bad uh, figure in the, in the public media. So uh, there are plans by 2030, all diesel cars will be banned. And by 2035, all hybrids will also be banned. Also, uh, KFC blames supply issues for missing menu items. Uh, KFC has warned that supply chain issues are disrupting both their food and packaging stock nationwide. They have refused to share that what is uh, being kind of what is in low stock, but uh, they're trying to solve the issues. Uh, GC has, uh, well, good news. Oh, yeah, GC has results uh, 2021 and records, passes, and top grades. So, uh, good news. Uh, this uh, The GCSE results have broken a new record. Bad news. They have also broken the new record. Which, which means they're better than us. Uh, so GCA students have received another set of record grades and uh, with figures state that there have been like 2% increase uh, with people getting A's and A star and also another 2% uh, increase in people's getting more C's, uh, which is good. And top grades, uh, as I uh, mentioned there, that from 26.2% to 28%, they have been a massive increase. And also, uh, girls on average scored uh, much better than the boys. Uh, sports, uh, football frenzy. Uh, as Premier League kicks in, uh, a lot of big signings have been happening so far. So you have Lukaku, which has been signed with, and Ramsdale, Varane, Abraham, 
Conde and Westergaard, they all have been signed to and changed, I believe. But I don't know much about football. So if someone else is an expert, they're welcome to kind of talk about it. Uh, Messi is uh, the biggest news so far is uh, Messi has uh, left Barcelona and kind of a week or two weeks ago and shockingly kind of shocked the media and, and now have joined a two-year deal for uh, of uh, uh, has signed a two-year deal with PSG and he kind of landed in Paris uh, one or two days ago. Uh, CJ Uja, uh, the British Olympic silver medalist, suspended after positive test for banned substance. Uh, so he was banned. I believe the uh, substance is called Osterine. Uh, I think I forgot the name. So what the Osterine does is, is uh, uh, it basically increases muscle mass, skeletal muscle mass, and improves the movement. So essentially, kind of, since he had more muscle, he had more power. So he might have, uh, and he was che- he cheated essentially. Uh, you know how I love science, so I always make sure this is kind of the biggest segment. Uh, yeah. So I was going to uh, BBC News trying to find some news and all I saw was climate change. And I think that's kind of the major point nowadays because it's really had a big impact. So if, if you can uh, do your, try your best to kind of uh, contribute to society and reduce climate change, obviously this is also a religious thing. And Azur also says that you're supposed to help your community. So let's hopefully, let's do it so they can uh, so people can do more news about other things and not about climate change. Uh, frog skin cells turn stem cells into living machines. So here, what scientists did, and it was on news that they got they took some stem cells out of a frog and they kind of let them grow on their own. And what they found that they kind of turned into living machines. And it, it, there's a lot of ethical questions being raised on what it can do and what uh, things can be done. What, what, what they found was they normally lived up to uh, 10 days. And also if they were kind of uh, damaged, they would just uh, heal themselves. And they also uh, produced cilia, which essentially is like hair on cells. And they use those to uh, move around. So essentially, yeah, they become living machines. Uh, and indigenous people in the Philippines have the most uh, Denisovan DNA. So Denisovan are the species of hu- uh, human race which are related to Homo sapiens that went extinct. But recently now they have found that uh, the uh, on Southeast Asian islands, the uh, those uh, uh, habitants ha- possess five percent uh, Denisovan DNA genes. So that potentially, uh, so that potentially could lead to uh, maybe you could could save the species and it could also. Uh, give a lot of uh, uh, allow us to research a lot more. Uh, <laughs> a funny story: uh, the first uh, rock sample actually has gone missing. So engineers are trying to work out what went wrong when the U.S. Space Agency Perseverance rover uh, gathered its first rock, but it kind of uh, 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 it, it got lost. <laughs> uh, disaster news. Uh, there's a, uh, as you know, uh, with yesterday and even today, uh, there has been a pl- shootings in Plymouth and a lot of fatalities. Uh, there have been a total of six deaths, with the sixth person being uh, believed to be the uh, murderer, and he kind of took his own life. And uh, Devon and Cornwall police were called to Biddick Drive in the Cayham K- area about uh, 6 10 uh, a British summertime on Thursday. And there was a series of fire- firearm incidents. The, the people kind of uh, narrate the incidents uh, that they saw a man with shotgun and then a lot of shooting. In Afghanistan, as I mentioned before, in Afghanistan, major cities have fallen to Taliban amid heavy fighting. And they have uh, seized the city of Ghazni and Herat on Thursday, and, and, which is, and they have taken the strategically important, uh, 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 really important uh, places, and this increases the chances of them uh, taking Kabul. The issue with Afghanistan is that uh, you have the uh, massive uh, mountain range called Hindu Kush. And what that ins- essentially does, it separates like there's three major cities like Kabul, Ghazni, uh, and Herat. These three kind of major cities, they're legit uh, separated by uh, mountain ranges. So essentially, it's like a two, uh, two kind of uh, uh, tendrils, uh, uh, tentacles, like r- going right through Afghanistan. So es- essentially, this has made it very hard. Uh, for kind of uh, uh, Americans and any outside forces to invade Afghanistan, and on the and also have given Taliban an advantage as they're more aware of uh, they can easily kind of destroy roads and 
potentially hold back easily these countries. A uh, Jamaati news, a uh, great Western revival book is out. Uh, 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 I request everyone to buy. I've started reading it. I've already finished the first kind of so the first of the sixth sermon, and it's really interesting. What I normally do is uh, I get a highlighter. And every time I see kind of a, a really good point that I can use, I just underline it. Uh, with, I just highlight it and I just carry on. So that's a good tip if you, you can use if you're um, reading this book. And oh, Jalsa Salana. Let me just put that up. So, I mean, this is a really famous video. I hope you've seen it, but if you're not, if you haven't, here it is anyway. So, as you all know, as you all must have heard on Friday, Azul mentioned, that on one occasion, even he had to wipe mud off his forehead on a jilsa. When we heard this, you know, uh, we were filled with passion. We were filled with motivation. We saw this as a badge of honor. This was a medal for us. So this mud that you see on me, this is not, this is not a burden. I love this. And this is, this is our passion. So this year, it's been our duty to help everywhere we can, not just security. <laughs> All right. Uh, we also have this week with Azur. So this was a really uh, uh, good uh, thing that happened. Also, we have uh, from today's summer, we have a very uh, interesting uh, point that Azur mentioned. I would like everyone to uh, listen to it. पार्किंग से कारें निकालना भी एक बड़ा मसला हो गया था एक वक्त वहाँ रजाकारों ने काम किया और अमलन कारें उठाकर ही पीछे में से बाहर रखी हैं और इसमें इनके साथ बाज़ दफा दूसरे को शोभों के कार को नांद की फारब होते थे शामिल हो जाते थे बाद में मुझे लिखा कि हम शामिल होते रहे फिर सो ऑब्वियसली दिस वाज अ रियली अ पॉइंट आई रियली लव्ड सो आई विल समराइज इट सो व्हाट हुजूर सेड दैट पीपल फ्रॉम हु वर डूइंग अदर ड्यूटीज saw the opportunity and decided to help out with the parking duty obviously i was there and i saw a lot of amumi and security members also joined in and started helping so this was a really uh, uh, amazing thing and uh, we can actually take this for lesson that if you're doing a duty and you've done it and you see someone else uh, that also needs help don't hesitate to help them as well uh, discussion news i mean obviously it was about jaza sanana and you all, we've already had a talk so yeah, Jazakallah for listening to K-News. Uh, I'll leave it to Mrabi Saab now. Jazakallah, Kassan. Brilliant. Um, very nice. Put, nicely put together. Um, and it's good you found the clip of Azur because you know, some people don't get the chance to listen to the Friday sermon straight away because um, of different reasons. So that was just a small bit, guys. There was, there was a bit more to it. Um, so do try to to listen to it. Um, so Muslim will cover it in a second. Uh, but just before we go to that, I um, just wanted to highlight that that video which you saw of um, the Beirun team. Um, it was Os Osama Sefola, who's from from Birmingham as well. Um, and you you know the beautiful that quote that mud you see on me, you know, is something that you love. You know, it's it's really beautiful to show that his love for Khalafat and and you know how his his experience was as well. So another you know beautiful example of how Allah Ta'ala you know gives his fuzzle and his grace um, to those who he wishes um, and alhamdulillah it's another one from our, our side of the, the country um, I just want to go to Umar quickly now Umar just wanted to play a quick video and this was of MTA and this was Azur was talking about about um, MTA covering what happened in the car park so Umar if you can quickly load that up uh, yeah. and we'll watch that Jazakallah have you got it ready? Uh, yeah it should work <laughs> if you could share your screen please and we'll watch that and then we'll just finish off today with um with the friday sermon so harun was saying uh before as well about how i mean pakistan they they prepare and I, when i was in pakistan uh, i was there from just over a month and i saw exactly with my eyes how it all happens um and we even asked him that why do you go through all the effort you know it's not going to happen um, and he said this was a direct instruction from Azur that if ever the instruction does come, 
then we would be ready for it and we won't even hesitate on holding you know the best jalsa possible and at the same time it continues everyone um, knowing how to do their duty and um, understanding exactly the importance of their duty and never losing out on that as well Tiga. yeah yeah uh... Is that sound to it? Yes, on. Oh, I'm not sure if you can hear it. Yeah, Zach, I think that was it. That was a short video, um, but it's good just to capture what Hazur was saying to be able to see it as well. Um, Zach, thank for sharing that. <clears throat> so I want to finish off with the Friday sermon now, because we're just coming to the end. Um, just coming close to 7.30, so don't want to keep everyone too long. Uh, Hamza, nice. <laughs> don't have to zoom into your face. <laughs> oh, Hamza, don't want to see your teeth. <laughs> um, I was going to say something, but yeah. Um, we'll just go to the Friday sermon now and then inshallah we'll, we'll just close it off there. <laughs> and Muslim, if you could just quickly share your screen, please. Uh, uh, just a Friday sermon summary. Um, so at the start of the uh, Friday sermon summary, Hazrat Khalif al Masih, Ayyidullah Ta'ala bin Asr al Aziz, uh, mentioned that not only was the Jalsa had um, held. Um, uh, in the main place. Uh, it was also held in congregation in different locations um, around the world, such as uh, the UK, uh, Guatemala, Bangladesh, Australia, Canada, and the United States. Um, also, Hazur mentioned uh, comments from several non ahmadi friends who watched the Jalsa um, uh, and how it brought people all around the world closer to Islam and Ahmadiyyat. Um, one non ahmadi friend named Isa Saib from Niger com commented that we had always heard that Ahmadiyya Jamaat is an enemy of Islam. Um, after watching the Jalsa, I have realized that if Muslims worldwide were as united as Ahmadis are, no one could harm them. Um, this unity is a testament to your truthfulness. Um, another non ahmadi friend from Hiroshima uh, commented about the destruction of Hiroshima in 1945 and that Hazrat Muslim Aldrizialano was one of the first voices to be raised for the people. Uh, and today, uh, Hazur does the same thing, striving for world peace. Um, another uh, friend, an African friend commented that um, Islam's granted uh, rights to all women and um, Hazur has advised men that they should treat their wives with kindness in their homes. Um, Jazakallah. Jazakallah Muslim, very good, very well summarized, mashallah. Uh, mostly, was anything that uh, you took from from the Friday sermon which uh, which stuck with you? Um, most of it, to be honest, it was just about like how Hazur was giving faith inspiring stories uh, about how the non Ahmadis were, um, how they how the views of Ahmadi had changed once they actually got to watch Jalsa and how it brought more people together. Yeah. That's good. Jazakallah. Um, Friday the thirteenth is usually seen as a as a as a scary day, but um, this should be remembered as a day of of great pride and great joy for everyone in the West Midlands, um, because of Zuru, you know the way he highlighted all the work that happened in Jalsa, and especially us being part of it, um, or you guys being part of it, um, it just adds to the historic um, touch of it. So Jazakallah, <clears throat> um, everyone for joining today. Um, it was really nice um, hearing different voices and um, hearing your experiences. Uh, we'll do our best to get your voices heard as well and get your stories out there the best that we can. Um, so Jazakla again for, for joining today. We try to do this every Friday at 6.30.
So if you guys are ever around, if you know that other Khudam can join, then do spread the word and let them know because we never know who will have a good experience and who has something to share. And this is the real purpose of this platform, that anything that's happening around um, our region, that we get to come on the platform and share it with each other. Um, so again, Jazakallah everyone for joining. Inshallah, we'll catch up uh, very soon um, next week. Okay, guys. Jazakallah Amr, Jazakallah Hamza, um, and everyone else, Harun, um, Ibrahim Saab, Qasim for the K News, and everyone else who was listening Muslim for the Friday sermon. Tiga, Inshallah, we'll see you all next week. Assalamu alaikum. Take care, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Yeah,